Number 40. Which contains the greatest number of moles of oxygen atoms? One mole of ethanol, which is C2H5OH. One mole of formic acid, which is HCO2H. Or one mole of water, H2O, and explain. Okay, so we did a very similar problem in number 39. So if you want to be more familiar with it, you could always go back to number 39, but we're going to just move right on forward for this one. We love to do roadmaps here, so you always basically either start with what you're given and you try to connect to where you're trying to get to. So in each case, we start off with one mole, one mole, and one mole of a specific compound, right? So you're starting with moles of a compound, and you're trying to get to moles of just oxygen. Oxygen is just O, right? It's part of the compound, but it's not the whole compound. So we're trying to go from moles of a compound to just moles of oxygen. Can we do that in one shot? Can you go from moles of a compound to just moles of an element? The answer is yes. So this is a one-step problem you will use basically, I call it a compound ratio. And I'll show you how to do that in two seconds. All right, but just know, this is super important. You can always go from a mole of a compound to mole of an individual element by using some sort of ratio. But the key is that they both have to be moles. Now, you might say like, wait a minute, you know, there's atoms here, right? Why aren't we going to atoms? Good question. But always look at what they say in the first place. They said moles of oxygen atoms. Atoms is just telling you that it's one single element. That's why it's called an atom. But still, we're looking at moles. So that's why mole is important here. All right? So let's try it out. One mole of ethanol, C2H5OH. Oops, let me just say C2H5OH. How do we do this? When we're doing our roadmaps, remember, it's all based on conversions. So we got to use our conversions, our ratios. So with this, you will multiply by a certain conversion. Mole of C2H5OH goes on the bottom. And since we know that this is a one-stepper, I can automatically put mole of oxygen on the top. Now, this is how you figure out what the numbers are going to be, right? What number do I put here and what number do I put here? So you always look at the compound. You assume, you say, okay, if I had one of these, if I had one C2H5OH, how many oxygens are in one whole compound? It's the same thing as saying, if I had one mole of this whole thing, how many moles of O is there? Well, it's um, c 2 h 5 O, H, how many oxygens are here? Just one. So that's how you fill in the answers. You got to look into the compound to see how many individual elements there are. But in essence, this cancels this out, and that goes bye-bye. So one times one divided by one is just one. So this would just be one mole of oxygen. So that's how many moles of oxygen would be in the first one. One mole of oxygen. Now let's do it for the second one. You have one mole of formic acid, HCO2H. Well, times by the ratio in which you put the unit that you don't want on the other side. So mole of HCO2H goes on the bottom. And we know that we can go from one mole of a compound to an element. So I'm going to put that there. And now we just got to figure out what are the numbers here. So you always look at the compound. If I had one of this whole entire compound, one HCO2H, how many individual oxygens are there? Oh, there's two oxygens, right? So if I had one whole compound, I would that would equate to two oxygens because literally there's two in the compound. And that's how you get those numbers. Mole of formic acid cancels out, and one times two is two moles of oxygen, box that answer off. So that formic acid, I'll put it over here, this equates to two moles of oxygen. Last but not least, we have one mole of water. Well, times by that ratio, mole 
of H2O goes on the bottom, mole of oxygen goes up on top. We now just got to figure out what numbers goes on the top and what goes on the bottom. It all depends on what the specific compound is. If you had H2O and if you had one H2O, how many oxygens are in H2O? It's H2O. There's one here, right? There's a secret run. So there's one oxygen for every one whole H2O. So it's one mole of oxygen for one mole of H2O. Mole of H2O cancels out. One times one divided by one is one mole of oxygen. And that's your answer for the third one. So, which one contains the greatest number of moles of oxygen atoms? One mole of formic acid, right? So this would contain the greatest number of oxygen. We'll just say greatest number of moles of oxygen atoms. Why? Explain why. What was the difference? This one was the only one that had two moles of oxygen in the compound, as opposed to one mole for ethanol and one mole for water. That's the reason why. So greatest number of moles of oxygen atoms, I'm just going to put over here because it had, that's it, it had the greater number of moles of oxygen in compound. It had two moles as opposed to one mole for both ethanol and water. All right? So simply put, th that's all there is for this, but it's really important to keep getting, you know, the hang of how to do your conversions. So practice makes not perfect, but very, 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 very close to perfect because no one's perfect, right? Not even me. Um, it took me years to get to this stage. So, but keep going, guys, all right? Um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope this helped you out. That's basically our only, the only thing that we would like to do. We just like to help you guys out. And if you want to help us out, click the subscribe button. It just helps get the word out to other students like yourself who are trying to learn through the OpenStax textbooks. All right, thank you so much, guys. Have an awesome day. See you later.